is Nintendo about to drop the Switch Pro, the Switch Revision, the next-gen Switch, whatever the heck this rumored, reported-on platform that's supposedly coming in 2021, did Nintendo give us a good idea of when we can expect that system to land? That is the question we are going to answer today because it does appear that there may be some faint hints that suggest when we can expect to get this system. Now, before I get into it, I gotta remind you of two giveaways we have going on right now. One for Super Mario 3D All-Stars. We're giving away three copies for that. Uh, and then we have a second giveaway for a Switch Lite and two Nintendo Switch games of choice. To enter those, go down into the description and all the details are down there. All right, let's get into this interesting conversation. So, we had a recent Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase. Yes, I know, it's a mouthful. And in my opinion, it was the best Nintendo Switch Mini Partner Showcase yet. So, there's only been three. You know, it feels like we're going to get one almost every single month the rest of this year. Uh, and so, there's a potential to have better ones in the future. In fact, um, we, you know, getting a pretty good hint that Doom Eternal might be the one of the big if not the big game shown off finally for nintendo switch in the next one uh because it seems like that game is going to be ready soon potentially for a december release on switch or something like that you know try to get a another big game out on switch this year but we'll see it could end up being 2021 so we had that showcase and, and we had uh some new games announced monster, monster hunter rise stories 2 obviously the the shadow drop of uh of ori so there was a lot of stuff talked about in their Desagia 6 coming next year. But I have this feeling. And this has actually got some historical um, cachet to go with it. So Balan World was talked about. Again, kind of like a Knights style game, if you guys ever remember that franchise. And Monster Hunter Rise was talked about. And throughout this, you guys are seeing like the trailer of Monster Hunter Rise kind of on, on repeat. Because we're going to talk a lot about this one. Uh... Monster Hunter Rise is supposedly, reportedly a Switch exclusive. It was not announced specifically with the words Nintendo Switch exclusive, but everyone who said this game was coming is saying it is Switch exclusive. So we're just going to presume it is a Nintendo Switch exclusive game. At least, a, uh, it, it, if nothing else, it will be a launch exclusive, I believe, a timed exclusive. They might port it to something else. Uh, but they specifically said it's not a Nintendo Switch exclusive. And this could be... Because it might be heading to the next Switch. We actually talked about this on the most recent episode of the Nintendo Prime Podcast, which uh, you can click above to watch. And I think uh, when we when we go back and we, and we talk about this, that Monster Hunter Rise releases on March 26th, along with Balan World. And if you look at the last major Monster Hunter game we had, I'm not talking about the one ported to Switch, we'll get to that in a moment, but we talk about the one that came out on 3DS that launched the new Nintendo 3DS. Nintendo launched the new Nintendo 3DS with Majora's Mask 3D. Yep, that game. And Monster Hunter. And Monster Hunter and Majora's Mask combined to really push new 3DS to be one of the top-selling platforms and quickly overtake the sales of the regular edition 3DS. Yes, both those games were playable on the regular edition, but they really pushed forward that new hardware. And... Last time we had we saw Monster Hunter on anything Nintendo was a Generations port to Switch, and along with that port came a fully customized Nintendo Switch system in Japan. They have not announced such a system at this point. Now, granted, there's still time to announce a, a system like that, but normally for stuff like this, they like to get pre-orders up pretty quickly uh, because you know it, it's a timed exclusive uh, collectible thing, especially for the Japanese gamers. And they're clearly going to have some sort of custom one because they did have a custom new 3DS as well. There's going to be a custom something because Capcom and Nintendo work closely together with these Monster Hunter games. So there's going to be a custom platform. Maybe it's a Switch Lite. Maybe it's an OG Switch. Maybe it's a Next Gen or Switch Pro. The reason we bring this up is because they launched Monster Hunter 4 as the game to launch... Uh, you know, to, to launch the new Nintendo 3DS. Is it possible that Monster Hunter Rise is actually coming to launch the Switch Pro or Next Gen Switch or Switch Revision, Switch Plus, whatever they decide to call it? Now, I'm not speculating on what the hardware is or any of that jazz. We've, we've done plenty of that um, in the past. But I'm actually focusing on this because it's very interesting timing. Nintendo, if you want to take them at face value, 
Earlier this year, Shintura Furukawa said they have no plans to release new hardware this fiscal year. Fiscal year runs through March 31st. So technically, this game comes out five days before the end of the fiscal year. However, Nintendo has also in the past said things like, we are not releasing a new version of the 3DS this fiscal year. And then one week later announced the new Nintendo 3DS. And it released that fiscal year. So it's not unheard of for Nintendo to be like, hey, we're not going to be talking about this. We don't want even people thinking about it. We're ha- we got a holiday season that this platform is not going to be part of. And it's, it's obviously Nintendo doesn't want investors or anyone else worrying about new hardware while they're still trying to push the current hardware for the holidays. So Nintendo saying that there's not going to be anything this fiscal year doesn't necessarily mean anything. They could still have something land at towards the end of the fiscal year to really get 2021 kicked into gear. This is in addition to all the manufacturing uh, you know, reports out there that, that, that they're starting to go into mass production on this platform and all that jazz. So we'll see what happens. So... Another thing is they're not going to launch it with just Ballin World, you know, and and Monster Hunter Rise. And I got one more thing to talk about Monster Hunter Rise, but I, I think Nintendo's going to have a first party game with it as well. I don't know what. I'm not. Uh, you know, they launched last time with Majora's Mask 3D and Monster Hunter 4, so maybe it'll be Monster Hunter Rise and Skyward Sword HD. Or I mean, if they really want to set the world on fire, Monster Hunter Rise and Breath of the Wild 2. Because, by the way, the way that A.G. Anomo talked about Breath of the Wild last time around when Age of Calamity was announced, about how, like, hey, like we, we want to show you this game, but we just need a little bit more time to do it. You could take that as, mm, they need a year. They need two years. Or you could take that as, he literally just said a little bit more time. That sounds like they're basically ready to show this game. They just don't want to overshadow Age of Calamity. They don't want to overshadow Nintendo's holiday season. They want to wait till they get past the holiday sales period and then hit us with that Breath of the Wild 2 hype for the 35th anniversary of Zelda that happens in February of next year. February 21st of next year is the official 35th anniversary. There will be, I almost guarantee, either in the month of February or or, or, or shortly after the month of February, a Zelda focused nintendo direct that's going to announce 35th anniversary plans for the legend of zelda including breath of the wild including some sort of collection pack and or twilight princess port wind waker hd port etc maybe skyward sword hd maybe uh an all-stars style collection of some of the classic games maybe they don't do 3d maybe they maybe they go you know with with nes zelda and uh, you know a, a link to the uh the past and uh the adventure of link and like they maybe they bundle a whole bunch of those games together i have no idea but it is widely believed amongst several industry insiders, including Jeff Grubb, including Nate the Hate, uh, including MVG. A whole bunch of people are of the belief that Breath of the Wild 2 is co- definitely coming out before E3 of next year. That the game is that close to coming out. That it is that close to going gold and going into mass production ready for launch. And launching new hardware with that game and Monster Hunter would make a hell of a lot of sense. Now, if you recall, the Nintendo Switch itself came out on March 3rd so of 2017. So if you think about that, there's a potential that we could have a Switch and Breath of the Wild anniversary that involves new hardware and Breath of the Wild 2 on March 3rd, and then obviously following up with the next game that takes advantage of it in Monster Hunter Rise. Or they could all tag team and release on the 26th, I don't know if Ballin World would be coming out that day uh, if Breath of the Wild 2 was also coming out because it would get overshadowed. Monster Hunter will not be overshadowed, per se. Worldwide, it would be, but it's still going to sell incredibly well. Um, but my whole theory with all of this, my whole ideal with all of this, is if you watch this footage of Monster Hunter Rise, which you have seen on repeat now, it's got some stutter to it. It's not quite running at a stable you know, frame rate of, of 30 FPS or whatever the target happens to be. I believe it's 30. It's not quite stable. Now, yes, there is time to iron it out and make it stable, but usually when you show off a game and you talk about it like this and you do a direct specific to it, the game is going to look pristine and crisp and it's going to uh, look almost flawless at, at this point. And it didn't. It looked crisp. It looked way better than any other Monster Hunter game we have seen on a Nintendo platform. But... It had a little bit of a hitch to it. 
Now, the running prevailing thought process with that hitch on the game is that it's because it's running on the original Switch hardware. Meaning that there's better hardware where that hitch does not exist. I'm talking a Hyrule Warriors Legends situation. For those who don't know, Hyrule Warriors came out on Wii U. There was a second version of it called Hyrule Warriors Legends that released on 3DS. And it was playable on the new 3DS and the original 3DS. On the original 3DS, you would get frame rates that were atrocious and nearly unplayable. On the new 3DS, you would get frame rates that were better than the original release on the much more powerful Wii U. To put that in perspective then, this game might look like it's chugging a bit because they're not ready to show you the pristine, crisp version that runs super smooth on that new gen hardware because that hardware hasn't been shown yet. When that hardware is shown and or announced by Nintendo, you might see a trailer instantly drop for Monster Hunter Rise showing what it runs like on that plat uh, platform and you might see higher resolution, higher frame rate, and just a much better overall looking experience. Again, dependent on how much of a power boost the supposed system, which Nintendo has kind of confirmed exists in a way. Remember, they made recent comments in an investors meeting saying, hey, you know what? We're working on cutting edge technology that needs to get at least five to six hours of battery life. That lets you know they're working on a switch. So cutting edge technology versus the cheap technology we used to work on to try to uh, you know, get a, get a cheaper product out the door as the, the lifespan of the system goes on. They're looking at cutting edge tech. We don't know what that means. Does it mean SSDs? Does it mean uh, better screens? Does it mean fixed Joy-Cons? Hopefully all of the above, to be completely honest. Does it mean, you know, faster CPU? Does it mean Ampere, 4K, DLS 2.0? Like, I, we don't really know what it means. We can only speculate. But it's possible since Capcom was clearly one of the few developers in the world that had access to new Nintendo 3DS hardware before anybody else. Because remember, when Nintendo said there was no new 3DS coming, all the hackers said it wasn't coming, all the Western developers said it wasn't coming, but yet there was these rumblings, these little sources out there, um, little birdies you know, hinting at certain leakers. They're like, hey, dude, it's coming, just most developers don't have it. They don't have the, the, the proper update on the dev side to even know it exists. And Capcom was one such developer who was specifically making a game to take advantage of that hardware. So I'm just saying, is it happening again? Is it happening one more time? Is Monster Hunter launching this bad boy along with either a Skyward Sword HD or potentially even Breath of the Wild 2 or Breath of the Wild 2 launching with it a little bit earlier and then that game. I don't know. March is going to be an interesting month. Interesting month. Anniversary for Switch and Breath of the Wild. We also are just like two weeks removed from Zelda's 35th anniversary. And Breath of the Wild itself has proven you don't need no holiday release to be selling 20 million of that. Animal Crossing proved it as well. Nintendo... I think is getting addicted to these early April, March releases that they know are going to sell huge. And why is that? Because Nintendo didn't need Animal Crossing New Horizons to sell big this holiday, but they needed Animal Crossing New Horizons for Switch to sell big earlier this year. It kind of gives Nintendo two holiday periods in the same year. Think about that. That's all I got for you today, or at least for this video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's been real, man. I, I, I'm, I'm just hyped for the future of Switch, the future of Nintendo. Um, and I'm just going to mention this for those that made it here to the end. If you have never played a Pikmin game or Pikmin 3 Deluxe, please give it a nice look for next month because it is a very underappreciated, undersold game. And Pikmin 3 itself is a fantastic experience. Can't wait to talk more about that as we get closer to that game launching next month. Again, I know it's not as big of a game as a Mario or a Zelda, but man, guys. It, it needs that appreciation. All right. I'll catch you guys in the next one.